So hello everybody, I'm the last speaker, so I try to not be too long so that we can go to the closing plenary. Uh, my name is Jeffrey, I'm working for the French Data Protection Authority here in a very specific position because <coughs> I'm working for the innovation and foresight laboratory of uh, the institution. So uh, this team has a different role. Uh, first one will be to explore emerging trends, uh, the second one will be to um, create prototypes, uh, experimentation, and proof of concept around uh, personal data. And the last one is to be a point of contact for uh, the innovation ecosystem. And uh, the first thing I wanted to show you is on the part of the exploring the emerging trends. We have some publications that we are, the first one. Thank you. So we published a document called The Platform of the Cities, which is about uh, smart cities and uh, the public policy issues we have around uh, um, the use of personal data and the new types of services we have in cities. And we used, in fact, design fiction as a, as a tool to uh, find the new ways of thinking about this topic. And I just wanted to show you some of the results of that. And I think I've destroyed the computer. It's, uh, the full document is in French only, but I will just show you what we did. In fact, what we did is that uh, we organized workshops, uh, Daniel was in, in one of them, uh, based on uh, analysis of uh, emerging trends around cities, new technologies, the thing that you have on the top left, uh, some uh, science fiction uh, um, ideas that we were gathering on the, on the bottom left, and we created uh, in the workshops uh, services in uh, 10 years uh, in the future uh, city around data and new services in the city and for each services we created uh, like a controversy between people that are for in favor and against these new services and we used it to uh, not at the end of the document of our product as a as a product sorry but really at the beginning to identify things that we were not really aware of so we made three uh, uh, scenarios in three different cities and I uh, just want to show you, so for example, the first one in New York, it's a uh, badly translated uh, uh, text of what we, uh, we put in the scenario, but just in a few words, the idea of this uh, scenario is based on the hyper-personalization of the city, uh, not, on, not only for giving new services, but in a way to transform the kind of relationship people have with the local government. And in fact, it's a bit like if you try to mix your local government with TripAdvisor, and uh, so there's the idea of this, uh, of, uh, this city as an experience and uh, a service called CitySense. Second one, it was uh, really focusing on, uh, on objective, uh, a goal by the public authorities of a region to create new activities through um, gamification of the process of uh, um, putting people in relation between a uh, uh, company and, uh, and, uh, and freelancers, for example, for something like a kind of a, a Tinder for uh, micro-tasking and, uh, and, uh, and work. And the third one uh, is about uh, civic bots uh, to mon uh, monitor and uh, discuss um, uh, local problems uh, based on, uh, for example, there was an idea of uh, if there are uh, issues between the neighborhood because of the noise of the uh, nightlife, or can it be uh, dealt with in a very uh, uh, automatized way so that you don't have trouble in social movements? And uh, with a civic boat, a very paternalistic one, with, uh, we called it Marianne Reloaded because in France, uh, Marianne is a colloquial, colloquial name for uh, the Republic. So it's the idea that you have someone you can talk with and try to shut down the problem. And 
all those things lead us to this, uh, cut, uh, this map we've drawn of trends in the smart city. So it's not uh, readable for you, but I just wanted to show uh, to show you this because you know, what we try to do is that uh, it's like a map of a transport uh, in a city, and at the end, as a terminus of each line, you can find another inspiration from uh, fiction and so science fiction. And besides that, we could work data protection, a priority, something happened this year. Uh, this thing was the GDPR, and it's quite a big thing. Uh, what you see is something we are making in the lab, we have made in the lab. It's a data visualization of all the links. Uh, between the different articles of the GDPR, so it's just a way to show you the complexity of this uh, of this um, regulation. And so, as you can imagine, it's it's pretty much 100% of our work outside of what we're trying to do in the Inefficient Lab to work around the GDPR. And in a nutshell, if you don't just want to understand uh, the basic idea of 80%, uh, 90% of what's in the GDPR is to say uh, you have great power when you use uh, personal data from uh, citizens, so you need to have a higher level of responsibility. And the main point of the GDPR is to put this idea of accountability, responsibility of the data controller uh, very high in the agenda. And fi finally, the individual in that is quite uh, just some thing, something you're trying to protect. There is one, maybe one exception, this right uh, to data portability, which is uh, an innovation in the GDPR, uh, it's Article 20. It's basically about making the personal data usable directly and under its control by the individuals. And I think it's something we look very closely in, the, uh, in, in my team because <coughs> first it's a way to say data controllers don't own the data. And the other thing is that it's one of the very rare uh, embodiments in the GDPR of this idea of self de data self-determination principle, and is that it's really important to have uh, more power and more control at the level of the individual and not only more responsibilities and more uh, legal principle at the level of the data controllers. Uh, just because sometimes there really are a lot of things that are very strange around data portability. For those of you who don't know this right, the idea is that you have a right to receive data and a right to transmit those data to another data controller without hindrance, and maybe a right to direct transmission between data controller when it's technically feasible. And I think it's really one of the very important uh, articles in the GDPR, and it's interesting to see that here we took a lot about portability at this conference. In the main, uh, mainly focused on GDPR conference, portability is not at the center of attention, but maybe, maybe more here. Yeah. And what we mean is that when we try to put on a not very nice uh, slide as the article, article 20, what you have on the bottom left and right is exactly what's written in the article. So the idea is that I was explaining you can receive the data, uh, uh, store it, and then share with another data controller. And we had to add something on the slide to make it more understandable. Even if it's not written in the article 20, it's this intermediary service provider that may happen sometimes, it may exist. And I think it's interesting because right now, we see that so a lot of people here are exactly in this space. And what I think is that when you look at portability from the eye of a foresight practitioner, yeah, uh, I don't think it's great because I'm 100% sure it's going to work, which is something that most of people think I'm a fan of this right because I'm pretty, I'm absolutely sure it's going to be amazing and everything's going to work that way. I don't think so. I think it's very interesting because we don't really know what's going to happen. Is there is Many, many different possible futures. I think it's uh, what it sh we can see now is that it shows how difficult it is to create efficient environment and <coughs> individual agency. You can't just say, okay, there's a new right and you, it's based on the idea of empowering people. It's not working right, exactly right there. And I think that right now what we see, sorry, is a lot of text. Uh, basically, the idea is that the vast majority of data controllers don't really. Uh, understand these new rights and there is not a lot of, of uh, new uh, use cases right now and I think that in a nutshell, um, I mean, I've done this one, um, we can see some reject and denial by a data protection officer and privacy professional around this uh, right in the near future and I think it's because 
we have to stop saying, and I think that uh, Lynn had said it uh, this morning, I completely agree with that, uh, this decentralizing or distributing data is not efficient. If you're not decentralizing and distributing power, you're just going to maybe create more duplication of data and maybe, in fact, more concentration of power in the end of, for example, big platforms. And so, to finish, to link the scenarios we made for this document with this issue, I think that right now, what's important is that, so we wrote this document based on the scenarios I've shown you, and one of the things we, we saw it was that in all the scenarios, we had uh, public local authorities that were trying to do things that look more like private sector services, and sometimes maybe we're less able to do that in a good way. So in fact, we're um, showing a lot of uh, loss of power from uh, public actors because they, were, they have to rely on uh, services and data that are mainly gathered by uh, private actors. So we created, in fact, um, we made uh, uh, scenarios for data sharing um, between public and private actors. And I just want to show you the last one, maybe if, um, um, I was in another uh, panel talking about the other scenario that we're just focusing on the, focusing on the last one. Uh, the idea of citizen portability, <coughs> we made it so that uh, when people talk about portability, it's always about, and it's really the last slide uh, then you uh, focusing on switching from one service to another. For example, uh, uh, putting your uh, photos from uh, Google Photos to Flickr or the other way around, or going from your bank account in Bank 1 to a bank account in Bank 2. And I think that it exactly shows why it's not easy to have a nice uh, scenario for the future because it's not very, very, uh, how can I say, disruptive. So we were trying to create this idea of citizen portability, the idea that maybe if we give back more data to citizens, they could share this data for general interest, public interest project, research project, and that what we really need, need to do in the future is not to focus uh, solely on this idea of empowering uh, individuals, giving them back data, but creating um, public or uh, commons governance system for uh, new uh, way of uh, sharing data and using them, for, uh, for example, for general and public interest uh, scenarios. And I really think that this idea around data commons, and I was very happy to see that this debate is very um, important in this uh, conference. I heard that a lot during those three days. I think this is the way we need to go if we want to see, let's say, more desirable uh, future for the my data ecosystem. So it's not my data only anymore, but my and our data. And I think we really need it to focus on that in the near future. Thank you. And sorry to me.